Hi, I'm Jenny Long. And I'm Salee Clark. And, and we, we are, are Jenny. Jenny. <laughs> we are so excited to be here with you this afternoon. And we are going to show you another Jenny quick tip. And today we are going to share how you can create a OneNote assignment right inside of Teams. So if you like this video and don't want to miss another video, be sure to subscribe so you'll get all the other great tips that we have to share. So after we show you how to create an assignment, we're actually going to give you some assignment ideas, like a practice page, a level one, two, and three. And that means we're going to show you how you can insert different types of materials into your OneNote. All right, we're going to get started. And this has been one of the top requests that we have had when we've been working with teachers. Like, I think they just keep saying, you know, I can't get this Word document to work, or I can't, I want something that my kids can write on. And we're like, oh my gosh, you just need to make a OneNote assignment. So you guys are in for a treat. All right, so we are inside of our team and we are on the general channel. And up at the top in the we space, you are going to click on class notebook. Now, if this is the first time that you have used a class notebook, you're going to have to um, go ahead and set it up. So that's what's going to show here is we're going to set up our class notebook. And then it's going to ask us, do you want to do it from a an existing notebook or start one from scratch? So we're going to go ahead and start from a blank notebook. If you do come from existing, it brings over the collaboration space in the content library. So that is a possibility. Now this screen is actually showing you what the notebook is gonna consist of. So it's gonna have a collaboration space. And one thing to note is that all of your channels actually make a section of the collaboration space. So that's the notes section in each channel in the we space that is the, the collaboration space. It is the notes section of the, the notebook. So it's kind of kind of hurts your head to think about it, but just so you know, each channel does have a piece of a collaboration space. Then the next section is the content library. And this is a great place where you can put maybe some study resources or things that you want students to have view access to, and they cannot edit that content. You know, Jenny, a lot of our teachers mentioned putting like anchor charts here. So that way students can always come back and review and see those materials. I think that's a great idea. And then the next part, and this is very important, is the teacher only. So this is kind of your workspace where you're gonna build your lessons and this is um, accessible only for you. Your students do not see this section. And then the last part, which is great, is the individual student notebook. So it's going to already set up an individual student notebook for each one of your students. And that's what we love about Teams is that auto setup part of this. So each one of your students has their own portfolio built right here. So we're oh going to go goodness. ahead and I can't wait to see these portfolios at the end of the year. They're going to be, know, it's going to be awesome. Go ahead and click next. All right, now this is the part where you need to think about how do you want the students' notebooks to be set up? So right now, there are already preset sections, so we can just delete those by clicking the X, or we can go ahead and just rename them since they're already here for us. So this might be where you wanna have your content area. So like if you teach math or you teach reading, um, or you just want them to have class notes, or you know this is their homework area, um, that's just gonna be kind of specific to you and how you do your teaching. But generally, we just suggest your content areas because this is going to be in their individual section. Think of this like their three ring binder, but digitally. So what would the table of contents or the sections be that you would have in their notebook? I love that. So I love thinking about it as dividers. So what dividers would you want them to put inside of their physical notebook? Awesome. And you can always add more later. It's best practice to kind of go minimal at first and then build and add more um, afterwards. You don't want to have too many and then wish that you would have um, <laughs> only had a couple. So go ahead and click Create. And then it's going to take just a second to get the notebook ready. All right, let's go ahead and go to one that we already have prepared. Here we are in our notebook. So it says, Welcome to Class Notebook. And what's great about OneNote is it actually comes with some pre-populated pages, which are just full of information. So you almost have like your own little tutorial built into the notebook already. So you can actually delete those pages if you want to later, but it's just great to read over them so you understand, especially if you're new to OneNote. So when we open this up, you're gonna see that we have some welcome pages for us. We have our collaboration space. And when you click on it, it's going to um, open up the pages behind that main section. So you have your sections, and then over to the right, we have our pages, and then we have the body of the content on the uh, far right. 
So those are the pre-populated pages. And if you wanted to get rid of them, you can just right click and delete those. And voila, it's gone. <laughs> and then we have our teacher only. And this is the place where you're going to build your content. Um, and then we also have our individual student notebooks. And you can see how in the individual student notebooks, you're gonna see the sections that we um, went ahead and created for them. All right, so what's great about this is in the teacher only section, this is gonna be where you're going to create. So um, when you first open it up, you're gonna have just that intro page that talks about teacher only. But if you wanna add additional sections, this is important. Go ahead and click on the section that you want the, pay, the next section to populate underneath. So I'm gonna click on math, and then at the very bottom, it's going to say plus section. So I click that, and then I'm gonna name the section. We already have a couple built in here, so let's see what Salee comes up with for a creative <laughs> section. I'm coming up with it. It's gonna be a good one. Come on. Okay. My favorite. And then say, okay, and look, that section populated right underneath wherever I was clicked on. So that's important you know, to think about. Jenny, lunch really might not be a good one. So you know what we could do? We could rename it. Oh, that's a good idea. So let's rename it. If I right click on it. You have lots of options when you right click, which is great. I do. I'm going to rename the section. So now, Jenny, what section would you like to add? Um, how about, uh, do we have notes? No, notes? let's do notes. And you can also reorder them. Like if I wanted them in a different order, you can just drag and kind of move them around too, which is nice. <laughs> All right, so you can see here that I have my sections built. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click into, let's say math. And once I click into my math section, I've already added some pages. So next on the right side of those sections, I have pages. So anytime I wanna add an additional page, if I, wherever I'm clicked and I click add the page, there's gonna be another blank page populate underneath. So good practice would be just to click on that bottom one, add another page, and then you're gonna build a blank page underneath. So this is where you're just gonna build the lessons that you're gonna add into your assignment. Let's talk about how to build. The first thing you wanna do is add a title. If you don't have a title, it will not let you assign it. So we definitely wanna make sure right now where the cursor's at, it already prompts you to start typing. So let's add a title. We'll do practice since this is our practice run. Oh, we already have practice. We'll do practice too. All right. Whenever you click inside of the white space, it's going to bring up the page. And now it's like a blank canvas. You get to create the assignment however you want. Um, if you want to type within here, you can. Um, so I can say, okay, so I can say, please look at the picture below and type your reflections. So I can even just type out what I want the students to do. I can even add images, just like the prompt said, right? I can go to insert and then picture. I can do from file, from camera, or even from online. So I can search online and I can even look for um, an image right here. And this is so nice because what if you don't have the image or you can't find it, you can just grab one from online, perfect. Oh, I guess. I like that one. I knew you would. <laughs> I mean, this would be a great writing prompt. How do you feel about yes. this picture? So now the picture's coming in, and we've told them, please look at the picture below and type your reflection. So we, maybe we'll just say, type how you how this makes you feel. How about that? It's where we all want to be right now. So now we're going to pretend that it's ready to go, and we can assign this right here um, from team. So up at the top, if I click on assignment, then I can click on create assignment. And now you're going to see the typical assignment form, right? You can enter in your title, your instructions, points. However, under add resources is where we're going to add our OneNote page. So since again, this is a practice and I even called this one practice too. <laughs> so we'll say practice two. Um, I can put in my instructions for my students. And for our purposes, we're being very vague, but we really, really stress it's important to give as much information as you possibly can, whether it's in here in this part, or if you've built the assignment with the instructions in that OneNote page. And we also really suggest that you use the tags as well. 
So when you use a tag on an assignment, it will help the students identify whether it's a math assignment or a science assignment, because when they see that long list, it helps for them to be able to um, see them by category. Mm -hmm. We love the tags. Even for me as a teacher, I like being able to quickly glance at it and see mm -hmm. what kind of assignment mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. Here underneath instructions, I've typed in my instructions and now I'm going to add resources. So I'm going to click this on is add where the, This is where the magic begins. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and now right over here on the left, you see class notebook. So I'm going to click on class notebook and here are my sections. Now let's see if you remember what section did we put that in? Mm -hmm. I think teacher only. Teacher only. That's right. And then within teacher only, let's see if you remember what section we did it in. I think mm. we were in math. I think so. <laughs> Too bad it wasn't lunch. <laughs> and then you see practice two. Remember I had a practice already. So it's practice two and attach. And now that page is going to send to the section I select for my students. So I want this to go into their math section and I'm going to say done. Now, the great thing about we love about this being built into teams is some of our students are younger and the teachers don't really want to show them all a class notebook. Uh, but the great thing is students don't even realize that they're inside a class notebook. They think they're doing an assignment right here in Teams. And we're even going to show you what it looks like from a student perspective. But I think it's also great because those students and when you get to the point where you want to show them the whole notebook, this is a portfolio of all of their work. Every assignment that they do lives in this notebook and they also have it to go back to and reference later to study. So it just stays with them. So that's the beauty of it also. And, you know, as a teacher, it's a great way to have a portfolio with you everywhere you go. You need to go into a meeting for a student and you need to show the student work. I go straight to my notebook, click on that student and all of their work shows up right there in underneath that tab. So it really is a great way to um, have a portfolio as a teacher as well. So I'm going to finish filling out my assignment. I can assign it to the whole class or I can even select specific students. I can do a due date and even send it to a specific channel, which we love. I'm going to click assign. And there it is. Now it has shown up for my students. Let's see what it looks like from the student view. All right. So now we're in as a student in our pretend class. And you can see right here the assignment posted or the student can find the assignments under assignment as well. I love this because it automatically kind of gives you a to-do list. Any white bar I have up here is I know I need to complete it and turn it in um, as a student. So it's a great way to have your own little running to-do list uh, within your team. So I'm going to click on the assignment. It's gonna tell me the instructions, but our favorite part is the book with the speaker. And you guys know what this is. Immersive Reader. Reader. We love it. And so I can click here and that's why Jenny was saying, make sure you fully explain yourself in the uh, instructions because guess what? It can be read to them. So make sure you fully tell them what you want them to do. Um, so I'm going to click here now on practice two. And this is where the magic is. Check it out. It is a canvas right here for my students. They don't even know they're in class notebook. They have no clue. All they see is this page with simple controls at the top and a white canvas for them to work with. How great is that? That is amazing. And that's the biggest thing that we get is people say, how can I um, put in an assignment where students can draw on it? So look at all of the tools you have. You can insert. So if you were asked to insert a picture or insert an image or something, you can do that as well. You can draw when you click on the uh, draw tab at the top, you can pick a color, you can draw and write on this. And if you have a touch screen or you're on um, a device, you can use your finger or a stylus. So that's really nice. And you also can type directly onto this page. So you can just click and you can start typing. And what's really great about that too, is when you're typing, you can actually move those text boxes around to wherever they need to be, which is nice. So they can just click in here anywhere they want and begin typing or even right underneath the picture and begin typing how they feel. Um, and so when they're done and they've written out what they want to say, they can go up to close right up here. And as soon as you click close, look, my mouse is almost right on top of turn in. They click turn in and it automatically turns in for them. Isn't that great? That's awesome. I know. Now let's look at what it looks like for the teacher, right? Because 
This is the hard part is going back and forth and seeing both views. So then as the teacher, I'm going to go back into my team. I'm going to click on grades and I'm going to see all of my assignments laid out for me. Oh, look, here's practice two. And I can see that Hunter turned it in. So if I click the three dots and I open his work, Ta -da! I can see what he said, which was just relaxed, <laughs> right? And that was great, but maybe I want more from him. Maybe I want him to really expand and give me two sentences, right? I can come right here in feedback and say, I am so glad this makes you relax. Tell me a little more. I love that. So the student has an opportunity to go back and do some revising and adding in a little bit more or making corrections. You and know, before I send this back, though, can I show my favorite part? Being a teacher, especially of a pre-K student, uh, back in the day when I used to be in a pre-K classroom, my favorite is insert. And look at this. Underneath the three dots, you can insert stickers. Stickers! What? So now I can give my students stickers for the work that they did. How much fun. Now, this one is my favorite, though, because they're editable. So I can even click on this one and I could say high five, Hunter. Mm -hmm. Ta -da! Done. And now that sticker is going to pop right here into his OneNote page and he'll see it whenever he goes to view it. I can even move it over here. I love the stickers. Me too. So now I can return it to him. And he's going to get a notification that we have returned his work. The other thing we love about this is that at the very top, you see his name here. I can click the right arrow and go right here to the next person in my class and see their work if they've actually clicked turned in or not, which is also another great way to help my students along in the process as they're doing work. So even here, maybe Emily hasn't turned it in. I can leave her a note and give her some feedback before she actually turns it in. And then I can go to the next student and so on. So, Silly, can we go back into Hunter's assignment and um, maybe redo some of his work a little bit better and show another one of my favorite features on his assignment? Oh, you got it. So we get this question a lot where, um, you know, maybe our young students have not learned how to type yet or even just students that, I mean, we all still kind of struggle because we, we don't really teach typing anymore. So that is kind of a struggle across the board. But we love teaching students to just get their thoughts out. So dictation is one of our favorite tools and students love it. So in the top right hand corner, you'll see a little microphone. And if you click that dictation, students can just start talking and it's going to hear everything that they say as they are um, speaking. And then they can go back and do their editing and revising once they've gotten their words out on the on the paper. And I can't show you right now because we're actually using the microphone for this video. However, it does begin just typing exactly what you say. And it's great. It is. And you know, it's good for all students. It's great for those 504 accommodations or IEP accommodations, but it's good for all students uh, to be able to have that option and really get their thoughts out on paper. We are so excited that you are ready to go and create some OneNote assignments. Do that, get comfortable, and then grow from there. So we can't wait to see what you do. Let us know if you have any questions. And don't forget to go and be a different kind of awesome. Bye. Bye.